Hey guys, my name's Charlito, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of playing Trance the Mice. So, first thing is, what is Trance the Mice? Pretty much, it is a mouse game, where the point of it is to try and get cheese with the help of someone called a shaman, or with the help of your own skills and get back to the home home. So first thing we want to do is make an account. You don't really want to play as a guest because if you decide you want to keep playing you won't gain anything from it apart from a little bit of self experience. So to create an account, you click create account. And then all you do is follow the instructions and that's pretty much it. Give me, you will need a email address, so your own or a parent's, to do it. Now the site recommend people to be at least the age of 13 to play that is because there is a lot of people around that say things that aren't really appropriate for children so that is a warning for everyone Okay, so once you've made an account and verified it with your email address by following the instructions that it says to do, you need to log in. So you type, put your username here, and then your password here. So I will be back in one second while I put my password in and log on. So once you put your password in, just click submit and you will be in. So be back in one second. Okay, I'm back. When you first get in, you'll get into something kind of like this, but ignore this green writing here. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is go to a special room where I can show you different things. Okay. This here is called Map Editor. This is where you can create and design your own map for people to play. Um, while I'm here, I will show you one thing that will help you out a lot. As you can see, there is all of this background here. And all you can see is this. If you press Ctrl F on the keyboard, it goes to a screen like this. This lets you see outside the map. So if you fall out of the map, there's a chance you can save yourself. Also, some shamans, when they, they're building, they like to build outside the map to get to different areas. And if, you're not, if you are in this mode, you won't be able to see that. So you want to be in this mode here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the different kinds of blocks or ground and what they do. So the first kind of ground is these ones here. So we have wood, we have Earth. We'll put this one about here. I think that's where I spawned. And there is sand. There is snow. I mean stone. There is snow. There is rectangle. And there is circle. So I will. Oh, there's also grass. 
So I will go into this and here. All of these blocks are very similar. They have a very similar similar grip strength. Like you can run around pretty easy, and you don't slide around too much, but you don't stick to it. And you can jump around and things like that. So that's the basic blocks or ground types of ground you'll see. It'd be more likely this wood here, or the grass or the ground here. It's not too often to see these other ones. Okay, so we'll go back to the editor and show different kinds of ground. This ground here is ice ground. Ice ground, you can probably guess, is very slippery. And I will get these other two out as well. Just for the sake of getting through these faster. There's two here. Okay, so we'll go back to this and I'll show you these next ones. So as you can see, this is the normal ground. Pretty simple. Ice, go onto it, pretty slippery. And it's very hard to grip. Now the bottom two, this one here, this one here. We start off with this one. This is called trampoline ground. When you go on it, jump down on it, you bounce. Now a tip, I'll stop that for a sec. A tip, if you want to bounce higher, jump and then land on it. When you get to the top of your jump, press the jump key. Or if you want to stop pretty quickly, jump not long after you hit it. Okay, this one here is lava. This here is a bit like this, but usually if you touch this, it will kill you. And I will show you why. So let's get over to it. It is very bouncy, extremely bouncy. If you hit it wrong, you die pretty quick. Boom. And there's not much chance of saving yourself if it throws you out like that. You're pretty much dead instantly. Okay, so there's this type of ground as well. It is called chocolate ground. So I will move this to here, and we will get this other ground out as well, and this out. Since they are the last ones, may as well get through them all. Okay. can be annoying um when you go on it you float and you can do fancy things like going up and getting to higher places 
and the map's kind of like that. You can jump pretty high with it if you're careful. Go up and jump, and you can get pretty high. The one thing though is when you're like this, you can float. But if you have cheese, you will sink to the bottom and die. Now to sink yourself when you're like this, just hold the down key, but don't hold it too much, or else you'll fall out like that. Okay, so that's the different kinds of ground you can get in the game. You want to try and learn these and what they do, because they will help you out a lot. There are a lot of different types of rooms, and the way to see them all right here. It's one with the lines and dots. Click on that. This is every single different type of map room you can play in. Transfer Mice is the basic map, the one that type of map that you get spawned into when you first log in. These maps are harder maps for average to experienced players, and you'll most likely play on them. This one here, Vanilla, they are made for beginners, they are easier maps for you to learn in, so you can gain your skills without too much pressure. Survivor is a mech type where the shaman doesn't help you but tries to kill you. And your go your goal is if you're not a shaman is to try avoid everything the shaman throws at you to survive till the time runs out. Racing I will go into a room and we will show you. It's pretty much a map, like the normal ones, but you have to rely on your own skills to get from spawn point to the cheese and back to the hole before the time runs out. Music, we will go into a music room, is just regular maps like you usually spawn. Okay, boot camp. This is very common for people to go into. It is the hardest type of map where it's kind of like racing. You're on your own, relying on your own skills. We'll go into a boot camp room and you'll see these are a lot harder than regular maps. They are not made for newer players, they are made for players who are very good at this game, but a lot of people come to bootcamp to improve their skills and learn new things. As you can see, I'm going to fail miserably at this, but if I die like this, I do not die. I respawn and I can have as many attempts as I want to get the cheese and back. If you get a bet, Cheese back to the hole like this person, you have a chance to get more cheese and back. This kind of map, Ypsilanti, is a map where you need to try avoid obstacles, gain the most points, to try win. So you need to gain as many points to these as you can. The map scrolls along. You need to avoid this death. As you saw, insta kill. These are speed boosts to make you go faster like that. And you pretty much just want to gain as many points as you can, as fast as you can, to get to the top of the leaderboard. And the last type is mod group. This is just different kinds of maps people have created themselves. So from that map editor. Now the village. I talked about not long ago about using feathers and golden tickets to buy things. These mice up here, 
I'll show you where all of the different lights are. So run around the map. Okay, right across at this end of the map, there's two mice here. If you click on them, you can see what they are selling and what you need to pay for it. So this is what you pay and this is what you get for that amount. And there's all kinds of different things you can get. So like here, if I had 50 golden tickets, I could buy any one of these titles. So that's another way you can gain titles, as I explained earlier on in the video. So I will go on to show you more of the places where these mice are hiding. So there's one up here. There is one here. We will go up the water elevator. There's one here. There is two in the treehouse here. And there is one here. There's all different things you can buy to make the games more fun. And the thing about the village there's no time left at all, but it's just a room for people to chill out and have fun and not have to worry about trying to get cheese or anything. There is different kinds of players in the game. There is newbies, which if you're watching this video is what you might most likely are. There is average players, so people will just come on to have a bit of fun. There is people called rushes, who as soon as a shaman places something to get to a certain area, they rush up and to try and be first. And then there is people called step headers. They are people who like to fake how good they are. So as you can see on my profile, cheese gathered all together and cheese gathered first. This would suggest that because there is such a big difference, I'm not a very good player, which is true. There are some people who if they don't get cheese first, they will just kill themselves to try keep this as even as they can. To make it look like they are the best player in the world, when really they aren't that good anyway. Well they could be good, but they could just be someone way better than them. Or someone who got lucky and bet them that way. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few things that can help out a lot. There is different things called commands, and they can help you out when you want to try to figure out different things. So this command I'm going to type, well first thing is I should show you how to type. You go down to here, this is the chat. Here is everything that's going on, people talking things that are going on around, what's happening. So to chat, you either click in here, or you can press enter. Okay, so the first thing, kind of command, is slash ping. Press enter, and a number comes up with a dot like this. That is pretty much how much lag you have. For me, this is not too bad. Some people can have over a thousand, some people can have close to zero. It just depends on your internet and how well things go. 
Um, there's another one, which is slash time. Press enter. This here says how much total time you have played the game. So I haven't only been joined for 14 days. But time added up altogether, this is how much time I have played. There is another one that I will show you in a sec, or I can show you now. There is a way to change a room, so if you don't like the room you're in, you can press slash room, and then type a room name or number. So I'm going to go room 4, enter, and now I've been teleported into this room. While I'm here, I'll show you the other kind of command. If you type slash watch and then your name, so type your username, my username is Chari Khan, press enter, all of the other mice turn slightly invisible, and you can see yourself. Because I came into the room late, I'm not here yet. That can help him because it helps you see things more better and yeah it can help out a lot there is another command that I kinda forgot to talk about is a command called mot so slash mot this command is very helpful say if you're in a room where it's, you have to do things on your own or where you're stuck with a shaman that's not very good or a shaman that's not very helpful or if you just get stuck on a map that you can't get away from press that and press enter see that one came up doing that kills you but that one that came up could add to down here and add to your shaman score points get you one step closer to having a turn at being a shaman. Another way you can report, if you can't do that, go here, slash report, space, then the person's name. So say, I'm going to do that. That does the same thing. Another thing you can do, if someone is being rude, but you don't want to report them, click their name and click ignore. This will, you'll still be able to see them in maps, but you won't be able to see anything they say in the chat and they won't be able to contact you. So it can be very helpful. I will quickly go into a different room so I can show things better. Okay, how to access the friends list. We've made a few friends and added them as shown. How do you see who they are? Down here beside the chat, there is these two things here. Click the one with the heart. This shows your friends list. And you can scroll down and see all of the friends that you've added. If they are like this, you have them added and they have you added, but they are not online. If they are like this, you have them added, but they don't have you added. If they are like this, they have you added 
and you have them added, and they are online. This here says what room they are in. If you want to delete a friend, you click the cross. If you want to do something called a private message, so message only you, them, and a moderator can see, you click this here. If you want to go to the room that they are in, you click this arrow, and it will follow you to them. Same with ignore. This is the people that you have ignored and don't want to see their chats. So you can look at them and manage them as you wish. There is one more thing. It is called a tribe. A tribe is something that you can create, or someone else has created, and can add you into. To access the tribe, go to here and click this one. It says tribe name, who's in it, and anything else that wants that you want to do. Same with these. This is to private message them, follow them to their room. This here is to leave the tribe. So it's for your own name, if you want to leave, you click there. If you want to talk to the tribe, you can simply press T, or as shown, you can type slash T, space, and then whatever you want to say. The next thing I'm going to show is inventory. There is things in the game that you can collect to make things more fun and exciting. To view your inventory, you can press I. Or, you can go to this house down here, press inventory. Here is everything you own. So I own these things. And they're different things you can collect and have fun with. So in your inventory, you have these things here. These are items with a orange box around it. You cannot trade. Items with a white box, you can trade with others. When you go around maps, you collect cheese and go to the hole. What is the point in collecting cheese? Well, it's pretty simple. If we go to the house, and go shop, you can see how much cheese you have, and you can use these to buy different things to customize your mouse, and give it your own style. There is things for shaman, you can buy special items to make being a shaman more fun and customize. This here is called a phrasing. Now this one I got from a special event, but having one crazy isn't very useful, so it is just sitting there. But to get crazies, you buy it with real money, or like I got it, which is very rare, from a special event. Now there is one other thing that the game has put in to make things more fun. It is, I don't know what they're called, I call them emoji. So this one here makes you dance. This one here makes you laugh. This one here makes you cry. This one here blows a kiss. This one here makes you angry. This one here makes you clap. This one here makes you sleep. This one here is a face palm, so when someone does something stupid or something like that, this one here throws confetti, and there's a plus. This one here makes you sit down. Then there's other ones where two people need to do things. This one here is a high five. This one here is a hug. This one is a kiss. Either that or the other way around. And this one is rock, paper, scissors. So let's see if this person wants to play. Do they want to play? I don't think they do. It's hard to see the options. It's pretty much this cog right here. When you get into the game, 
by default, you come in like this. To make things easier and less things in the way, I suggest turning off titles, guest nicknames, and your own name. This makes less things get in the way. If you do this, it adds the time in the chat down here. So that's just a extra thing you can have if you want. This here, particles. So if you turn that off, it will make confetti not be able to be seen. So it's just something that doesn't create as much lag. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave it on. And this here is the sound. Yes, you can hear there is no sound at the moment, but that's because my transfer mic is playing up for some reason. But if you turn this off, you can have your own music playing or something like that. Or if you just want to play in silence, that's fine too. Then just go submit and the settings are set. So I've talked about the chat that's here. This here is where everyone in the room will be. The names will be here in a list with a number down here. The person at the top is the person that is going to be shaman next. So if you want to keep an eye out for when it's your turn, watch here. Now, when you're not shaman, down here will be a leaderboard. So when you get cheese and get back to the hole, it'll say what place you came in and how fast you did it. Here, I'm not sure exactly what it is. But I'm guessing it is the name of the person that created the map and the map's code. This one here is pretty obvious. Time left. Pretty much how much time is left until the map ends. This here, mice, one. So this says how many mice are in the room. This here, shaman. It says the shaman's name. And it has a blue color. If there is one that has a pink color as well, that means it is a two shaman map. And they are meant to work together as a team to get through and help the other mice get their cheese. But most of the time, the two shamans fight it out and try to kill each other. So you just need to be careful if you get a nice shaman, which is rare, or one of the fighting shamans which are more common to come across. If there is nothing here, that means it's a map, map that you have to do all on your own, with no help. You can ask in the chat how to get through a pot, but a lot of the time some people don't see it and you end up stuck. So that's a good time to use the mock feature. This here says the kind of room you're in. It says the room name. So this is training room. If I change room to room. This picture here will have a picture of your mouse. Click on that. It will say your name, and when you first log on, this will be set at none. And you can decide if you want people to know if you're a female or a male. It will say your gender here, the date you joined, the name of the tribe if you're in one, your level, your title name. Um, how many saves you have as a shaman, how much cheese you gathered as a shaman, playing through the maps, not being a shaman, how many cheese you gathered first, how much you gathered all together. This here is a special kind of map that I'll go through later on. And just how many different rounds you have done of different types of games there are and all the different titles you have unlocked. As you level up, you can 
earn titles or you can buy titles. These here you can use to buy things at the village. So as you go through the game collecting your cheese, you gain skills and experience. So talking about skills, you go to the house and click skills. When you level up, this here says your level, and this is how far through you are. When you get to a new level, you get a thing saying you have a new skill you can get. These are things to make having a shaman life a whole lot easier. And things like making your shaman bigger, having a ball, being a cat. Having other mice roll around. It's just something to make things more fun. There is two things though that I would suggest you never ever ever get. Well, one thing never ever ever get. And one thing just to not get to make things a bit easier. And if you do have them, I would suggest resetting your skills and removing them. The first thing, this. When a mouse dies, a giant bubble appears. This is the most horrible thing invented by Dreadful Mice. You may think that it helps, and when you're first starting out, you do. I thought it did, and people convinced me they did. But really, they cr make it way harder to build as a shaman, they get in your way, they glitch out builds, and they kill more people. When too many people stand on one, which is what Russians try to do, it pops and kills everyone, and anyone standing nearby gets pushed out and flung off the edge, unless they're watching and able to save themselves. So whatever you do, do not get the skill, and if you do, please remove it. It is the most horrible skill ever created. Now this one here. When the last mouse enters the hole, you automatically win. This can be good to speed up time, but to get more experience, you need to get more saves. And to get more saves, this isn't always very helpful. Because if someone gets in the hole, there is something called revive. You can use that to revive more mouse and give you more saves. And give other people another chance to get some cheese. If you have this, if the mouse goes in before you use this, you don't get a chance to use it. So it's just something helpful. Just to not have. And that is the skill. And you can see what they do. If you hover over it, it says what it does. Most people suggest getting these kind of ones first. Especially this. It makes the area you can spawn things bigger. And there's ones further up that lets you spawn things faster. So people recommend getting this section first. But it's really up to you. Just please do not ever get this bubble. Please do not. So the very first thing, when you spawn into a room, you want to move around. If you don't, the room will think you're not here. And will kill you for being away from the keyboard or AFK. So, how to move? You can use either up key to jump. Down key to duck, right arrow to go right, left arrow to go left, or W, S, D, A. Just whatever suits you. Okay, so that's the basics of how to move the mouse. Now, we are going to show how to do something called wall jump. 
Okay, this should be fun. So here you can see we have a big wall. This is how we wall jump. So jump up and into the wall. And jump out and up and in quickly. Out up in. 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 So you can kind of get the idea. And same with this way. Well, out, up, in, out, up, in. So it works for both ways. So that is how you wall jump. So that's pretty much the basics of how to move and getting around. Where's Francis? Sell some water and lemon for blood. Or wear red. Okay, so we have been through the basics of how to play, like moving your mouse around, moving it around, how to wall jump, how to talk, all the different things around the screen, about the leaderboard, different skills profile, things like that. So next, we are going to get on to the hard stuff. Being a shaman. Now the point of being a shaman is to help people to get from their hole or the spawn point to the cheese and then back to the hole. Okay, so first we are going to show what the different shaman objects do. So this one here is an arrow. You can use it to try direct people to where you want to go. This here is a spark. You can use it to move things around the map. This here is a balloon. You can use it to get people up to places, or move blocks, or different things like that. This here is a room. You can use it to move blocks, pu slowly pushing them around. This here is a small box. This one here is a large box. This one here is an anvil. This here is a small plank. This here is a large plank. This here is a costume one. It is a Pokeball. It's something I got from the store. This here, this one, this one, and this one are cannons. It points to the direction that it's going to go. So this one cannons down. This one cannons to the right. And this one cannons to the left. This one here is ice. This one, this one, and this one. I'll have a thing where it can't be used until a mouse has gone into the hole with cheese. But it can be, be used to kill mice. This is a special shaman skill. It can be used to get a mouse that has cheese home. This is revive. It is another shaman skill. It does what? It says revives mice. This here, it gives cheese to a mouse. But to do this, you must have cheese yourself to be able to give it. It is also a shaman skill. This one here is another shaman skill. It teleports a mouse to you. This here is an apple. 
So say I go over to here. And put an apple up here. I'll go back down here. I'm doing things around here. And I want to do something up there. It has its own summons area. This here is a spring. It does what you'd expect. The more spring to use, the higher you go. It is a shaman skill also. I wouldn't use more than two though, because as you can see, it went from the bottom to the top of the map pretty easy. This here is another shaman skill. It teleports you to where you have it positioned. This here gets rid of a nail. Okay. So the first thing, I will select this. This blue ring around here, this is the summon area. This is the area where you are able to summon things. But there is two things that can be summoned outside the area. That is the arrow, can be summoned way outside the area. Anywhere you want. This is a spot. And it can also be summoned outside the area. But things like a box. Or a anvil. Or a ball. They must be summoned inside that area. Okay. Say I want to get up here. If I get my teleport out. You can see I can't reach. We'll make it up here actually. Because up here you can reach with a simple jump. Okay, so as soon as this summon circle hits the top or top or half of this block, that is when you click and hold to spawn it to get there. So get your teleport ready or object ready where you want it. There we go. And now you are there. So that is a very easy way to get to higher places. Okay now, I am going to show you the different kinds of nails. As you can see when I bring up, say, a plank, there are different kinds of nails. B, C, V. N and J. Now to start off, there is also something space that makes things invisible. So to start off, you want to place something on the flat, get it as close to the ground as you can, press B, then press space, then click and hold to summon. You have now summoned a small, invisible bee plank. Bee planks are the most stable in the game. In easy mode, which I'm showing now, you can use all of these. In hard mode, you can use C, V, and these other ones. In the hardest mode, which is called divine mode, you can only use these. You don't get these two. If you press C, then C again, it changes the position of the nail. If you want to turn a plank or an object, you can press Z or X. I'm going to position this one here, like this. For it to connect, it must be on top of something. If you place it above like this, it will just fall. And there is no use to anyone. What we want to do is get a plank, reset it since the map reset, as close to the ground as we can. I'm going to position this plank like this. I choose a C plank, so a C nail. Press and hold, 
it is pretty stable, but not completely stable. It still moves around a little bit, which can sometimes be annoying, but it's easy, easier to get to places more quickly if you use a combination of these B ones to make things stable and a long C plank. So you would do a B plank and then C plank, B plank, C plank. Just to keep things stable and moving on quickly. The least stable one is a V plank. So turn it again and watch what happens. I have it positioned like this, like I did with the yellow one, but if I summon it, it falls down and keeps on falling till it hits something hard. But this plank wasn't positioned very well, so it's not a very good example. So I will go over here and show here. When you are in the summon area, what you are holding will show red. When it shows brownie colour, or whatever colour it is, that's when you can summon it. So as you can see this is straight, but if I go to summon it, it will fall down till it hits something solid. That is why it is the hardest mode with only using them. Say I placed this here. And then I place this here, like this. That is going to glitch out and kill everyone, most likely. So that is a big mistake and you want to get rid of it. So you click on this, hold it over the nail you want to get rid of, summon, and then it will get rid of it. And then you can do whatever you want. A tip, when using things like cannons if you want to move people and everything around just summon like normal but if you want to just move objects press space it'll make it invisible as you can see it will go straight through me but it will hit objects if you want to connect a balloon to someone select the balloon Press C, then press space. Doing this will make it so people can't jump on top of the balloons and move the others around while you're trying to do what you're doing. Now the nail that's at the bottom where the mouse is, have that on the middle of the mouse, then summon. But if the mouse moves, they will drop off. So you have to make sure they know not to move. Another important skill a shaman can have is the most important skill. Knowing when a map is easy enough that you don't need to build. If a map looks pretty simple, then there's no need to do anything. Just sit back and relax. But if it's obvious that people are struggling with it, wait a little bit for the people that are good at it to do it and then help out the ones that need help because sometimes shams like to get things done and just get on with building with people that do need help but sometimes it ruins it for the people who are very good and Shams accidentally place things in the way and kill the people that was throwing the map. So just something to take note of. So I'm just going to do a quick shamming stage to show you how things can be done. The easiest way to learn how to be a shaman is to watch how the pros do it. Because you can see what they do. And you can try copy it and learn from it. And by doing that you can learn new skills and you can learn how maps are done. And yeah. So gotta work quickly to get past. I don't have a big summon area. 
so I use planks to make my way through to get down further so I can make it to lower areas. Something I didn't mention though, arrows can also be used to place extra nails to make things a bit more stable. Also, if you press the keys 1 to 0, or 1 to 9, you can see that it comes up with different things. So it's a quicker way for some people to sham. Personally, I don't like it. I like to see what I'm choosing instead of just going through them all and hoping I get what I want. So I'm going to do this the quick way and use a couple of springs because I have them available and we are running out of time. So put the springs, making sure they're low enough for other people to for people to jump off and reach. Going to place a long invisible plank this way and unfortunately we have run out of time but that happens but you get the idea so we have talked about how to sham how to move around different kinds of maps different kinds of ground how to do different things so pretty much this is the end of the video I hope you all learned something new um enjoy the game try not to get too serious because it is really just a game um have fun with your friends play around with them if you know anyone who needs help share this video to them and yeah so i hope you enjoyed the video like if you enjoyed it subscribe for more peace out